Welcome into the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. Everyone, Jacob Toby along with Sam Corman and Connor Federico here at Spillane Field. Game two between the Falmouth Commodores and the Wareham Gateman. We saw the Gateman win last night, their first playoff win since the 2012 championship series win. I mean, that's pretty big. How did they do it last night? It was everything. I mean, the starting pitching of Aaron Hernandez did what he needed to do against Falmouth. I mean, when you play the Falmouth Commodores lineup, one to nine, it's very easy to just get knocked out of the game in two innings. Aaron Hernandez um, was able to get into the middle innings of the game and, you know, shorten the game for the bullpen behind him, and that's very important. And, you know, ten runs for the offense, two home runs, that's always, you know, good to have, especially at a field like Go Fuller. You kind of need to rely on power in order to, um, to score. So Joe Durpich and Jake Anchia um, obviously took advantage of that, and that is why the Gateman won because they got five runs off those two home runs alone. And when you do that, you're more than likely going to win. Once again, I mean, this was only the second game this entire season where the Gateman gave up five runs or more and, only, and won the game. So, you know, that's, that's what needed to happen, and they, they got it done. Job's only halfway done, though. They have to win two games to advance to the second round. Falmouth left 11 runners on base yesterday, so they did still have some chances. Falmouth played a good game yesterday in terms of their offense. Putting up five runs, you just said it, against the Gateman, that's usually enough to get the job done. Yesterday, it was not, and you talked about uh, the Gateman for the first time winning a playoff game for the first time since winning the championship series in 2012. They haven't won a series since then either, obviously. They would like to do that you know, sort of repeat some champion success, championship success rather from 2012 and figure it out and get it together, beat the Falmouth Commodores and continue to advance. You can hear them behind us. They're having a grand old time right now. That's the attitude you need to have. Continue that and the Gateman will be in good shape. Yeah, different type of energy here at Spillane Field after the game one win. Gateman trying to sweep the Falmouth Commodores here in the first round. We'll take a short break here on the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. When you're sick or injured, you want care when and where it's convenient for you. South Coast Health Urgent Care has four locations, Fairhaven, Wareham, and now in Seekonk and Dartmouth. You can view wait times and even check in online at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Choose the time and location that's best for you. We'll even remind you when it's time to come in, and walk-ins are always welcome. Urgent care that exists to meet your needs. More than you expected? That's more than medicine. Check in at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Welcome back to the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. I'm Claudia Chikamian, joined by the Gateman designated hitter, Joe Derpich. So, Joe, first of all, you're doing pretty well since your arrival at the, uh, on the Cape, making the most of your opportunities. You've homered in both your games so far. What were you thinking at the plate last night, watching that ball soar over the fence? Well, I was just uh, thinking I put a good swing on it, came with the bat well, and hoping it got in the gap and it snuck right over. Now, you were kind of... You came here to help give the guys um, who've been playing so hard a rest and really prove yourself here. What's the main thing you really want to work on to better yourself while you're here? Just the uh, the pitching at this level is something I don't normally see, so being able to hit these pitchers would be something I'd like to work on. Now I got to talk to you after your game the other night for, to end the regular season. You said you're really excited to be here and you love the opportunity. But what's been different from that one game played at, um, against Bourne and the experience and the atmosphere of the playoffs? Just feeling comfortable and, you know, everyone making the most of this opportunity to play in playoff baseball in the Cape. So it's just been a great experience. And now tonight you guys have the opportunity to take the series from the Commodores and move on to the next round. What, how is the team feeling? What's your mindset going into tonight's game? We're all loose. We're all ready to play. So we just play our game. You know, we think we can get it done and hopefully we get a win tonight and move on. Okay, well, thank you, Joe. Best of luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Claudia. And now, gentlemen, let's preview the pitching matchup first for the Falmouth Commodores. Game two starter, Cole Sands. Well, Cole Sands actually started for the Commodores in game two of the championship last year when Falmouth played the YD Red Sox. It was a rough outing for him. He only went two and two-thirds innings and gave up seven hits en route to uh, YD winning that game and eventually the uh, Cape Cod League championship. So, you know, he's trying to shake off that game from last year. He probably still remembers it because this is his first CCBL playoff start since then. But the fact that he has CCBL playoff experience is something that most pitchers, I mean, almost all pitchers don't have. Um, you usually only get to see, you know, one or two starts max. I mean, it doesn't, it's not that often that you see returners um, starting in multiple playoffs each year. So that's an advantage that he has. Comes from Florida State, so he knows what the big game is like. Played in the uh, NCAA tournament, obviously, and also was able to help them um, win the ACC championship this year in that pretty competitive tournament with a lot of good teams. So 
um, I, I expect him to be sharp today against the Gateman. The Gateman will counter with right-hander Noah Zavallis out of Harvard. Good pitcher, even better guy. Well, Harvard is not Florida State, but Noah Zavallis brings the heart and he brings the talent of a future major leaguer. He has been so impressive this season, an ERA under .70. That's bananas. He, he was a reliever most of the season. He's come into this role as a starter now and totally owned it. Really like what he's done. 0-1 on the season, but he hasn't gotten a ton of run support. That's the thing that the Gateman offense needs to change for him. Out of the bullpen, we're expecting Jordan Britton next to follow Zavallis. But if Zavallis can get a good five or six innings and shut down this Falmouth offense, which is certainly possible with his skill, it would be a really good setup for the Gateman. If you didn't see his interview with me, go on the Gateman YouTube channel. It's all there. Good stuff. About five minutes. Talks about a lot of different things. His journey to the Wareham Gateman coming back from a season ago. We'll take a short break here. It's Belaine Field. Gateman, they're trying to sweep the Falcons Commodores. When you're sick or injured, you want care when and where it's convenient for you. South Coast Health Urgent Care has four locations, Fairhaven, Wareham, and now in Seekonk and Dartmouth. You can view wait times and even check in online at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Choose the time and location that's best for you. We'll even remind you when it's time to come in, and walk-ins are always welcome. Urgent care that exists to meet your needs. More than you expected? That's more than medicine. Check in at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Welcome back to the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. I'm Claudia Chikamian, joined alongside Gateman infielder Kyle Caster. So Kyle, good night for you at the plate last night, driving in those runs, getting a few key hits. What were you really seeing at the plate last night against the tough Falmouth team? Um, you know, I mean, I got batted down in the sixth spot, so I was seeing a little more, a few more fastballs than I was used to, and I was able to put some good swings on it. And uh, um, pitching wasn't that great for them last night. If, I mean, if we're just being honest and uh, I was able to get some good swings off on some fastballs. A lot of, you guys were able to capitalize on a lot of opportunities from Falmouth. They made some key errors early in the game. You guys were able to score off of. Um, Gateman only left seven men on base, which is something that haven't seen a lot of low guys left on base throughout the season. So it's a lot of things that you guys have been working hard on all season, finally coming together. What do you think has been finally clicking for you guys? Um, just like you said, I mean, early on it wasn't working, and that's baseball. It's how it works, and some days you're going to get the job done, and some days you're not. So, um it was definitely nice to get those clutch hits and being able to take advantage of those mistakes because that's what you got to do to a good ball club when they make mistakes. You got to make them pun you got to punish them for it. Now, um, what's this experience been like for you so far, especially in the playoffs? Your first year here on the Cape. Um, you've been here for a good amount of time with the Gateman. What's different uh, different about this playoff atmosphere? Um, it means a lot more. It means more to the community and the team and the coaches and the players. So I mean, uh, just. Everyone's a little more, uh, there's a little more pressure, and everyone just needs to elevate their game and uh, be able to play in these big type of games. Because if we want to keep playing in the future, there's going to be these big type of games that you need to be able to prepare for and uh, perform at a high level. So it's just, uh, it's been fun, and I'm uh, looking forward to today. And now you guys have the opportunity to sweep and take the series from the Commodores and move on tonight. How are you guys feeling about that, and what do you think is the key for tonight's game for you guys? You know, I mean, it was it was great to get a win last night, and uh, it's a lot easier to win uh, one of the next two rather than two out of the next two. So, I mean, we just got to take it pitch at a time, like I always say. And um, um, I think we're feeling pretty good and feeling good after yesterday's win and see if we can carry that into today. Great. Thank you, Kyle. Best of luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Claudia. If you need to email the Gateman broadcast team at all, use the email pressbox at gateman.org. Also, feel free to follow the Wareham Gateman on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Jacob Toby back with now our beat writer, Matty Feld. How are we doing? How are we doing? We're doing pretty good. The Wareham Gateman are up one nothing on the Falmouth Commodores. We saw Aaron Hernandez go five strong innings yesterday. What kind of impact has he had since arriving to the team? Well, I don't know who would have started game one if Aaron Hernandez wasn't here. Probably would have been Noah Zavallas, and then I would have had to ask myself who was going to start <laughs> game two. But he's definitely added a lot of depth. The Gateman were unsure of just exactly how many starting pitchers they would lose in the middle of the season. It turned out to be four of their top guys, and he's been able to come in here, stretch himself out in the bullpen, one, two winning, then a five inning re relief appearance this past Sunday against Orleans, and then yesterday gets the W. He wasn't, did not have his best stuff, didn't have his best changeup, did not have the late life to the fastball, but he grinded through a tough Falmouth Commodores lineup to pitch five solid innings and get a W. All right, predict game two tonight. Who do you have winning? 
I'm going to take the Gateman. Uh, hey, but before the series, I predicted on the broadcast they'd win game one and then lose the next two. But I just have a, a different feeling. I'm excited to see Noah Zavala's throw. He's an efficient pitcher. I think he needs to go six innings for the Gateman to win, and then Jordan Britton can pitch the seventh and eighth, and then Dalton Roach can pitch the ninth. But if Noah Zavala's can pitch like he has been, his last couple of starts, a .63 ERA coming into tonight, then the Gateman have a very good chance to move on to the Western Division Finals. All right, that's our beat writer, Matty Feld. You can read him at Gateman.org. We'll take a short break here on the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. When you're sick or injured, you want care when and where it's convenient for you. South Coast Health Urgent Care has four locations, Fairhaven, Wareham, and now in Seekonk and Dartmouth. You can view wait times and even check in online at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Choose the time and location that's best for you. We'll even remind you when it's time to come in, and walk-ins are always welcome. Urgent care that exists to meet your needs. More than you expected? That's more than medicine. Check in at southcoast.org slash urgent care. Welcome back to Spillane Field. Jacob Toby, Sam Corman, Connor Federico with you here on the Gateman pregame show presented by South Coast Health. Gateman trying to sweep the Falmouth Commodores here at Spillane Field and hopefully take on the next round opponent, whoever that may be. What's your key to the game tonight? Well, my key to the game is for the bullpen to really you know, work work hard against Falmouth and you know even do better than they did yesterday. Um, Brett Canine came in late. He was phenomenal. Um, but Grant Wolfram struggled a little bit in that one inning that he threw and you know, if the Gateman didn't provide as much run support, it could have gone wrong. But they did. They provided 10 runs. I don't expect the Gateman to score 10 runs again. If they do, obviously that's great, and <laughs> we'll welcome that any time. But um, the bullpen needs to be sharper than they were yesterday. I really liked what I saw out of Barrett Lowski. Um, that was one of his best, probably his best outing of the season. So if they can continue some bullpen success after Noah Zavalas, who we expect to have a good outing today, um, then they'll be in good shape. So the bullpen really has to uh, come in clutch for the Gateman in order to sweep this series over Falmouth. What are you looking for tonight? Well, for Noah Zavalas, it's got to be the strikeout tonight. He, Aside from Brett Canine, he's really the only guy left on this Gateman staff that gets a lot of their out a lot of his outs through the strikeout and that is so critical against the Commodores because last night we saw for the Gateman if you put a couple runners on base and somebody hits a home run you're getting more runs by virtue of having guys on base Zavalis he knows the defense has been a little shaky as of late don't put the ball on the ground don't get the flyouts just strike these guys out we know he's capable of it that's usually the opposite of what I say, trust your defense, but it has been a little shaky lately. Zavalis certainly has the ability to strike out six to seven guys tonight, depending on how many innings he goes. So that's my key for him. We saw him strike out eight here at Spillane Field versus the Chatham Anglers just a couple weeks back. I'll keep you hot on the mic. We talked about it off the air. There's a lot of guys you can choose from from this Falmouth team to key in on. Who are you watching? Uh, George Yancha for sure. He's been deadly against the Gateman this season. Yesterday had a couple hits, an RBI, a run scored against the Gateman. He's been very good and he plays a mean third base too. So you got to be careful of the uh, Texas A&M College Station guy, not to be confused with Aaron Hernandez out of Corpus Christi. Uh, but he's a great player for Falmouth in the middle of that lineup and it just seems like in the middle of the lineup up, it never stops. Last word, my friend. Who are you watching? Well, I think there's an obvious answer, and it's Josh Bro. And you already touched on him a little bit, but basically, anytime the guy makes hard contact with the ball, it's going over the fence. So you have to really locate your pitch as well with him. Noah Zavalas has a nice um, slider that he can work, you know, inside towards the inside part of the plate on him, and that might work well. But it also might be a good idea for him to keep the slider away from him. Um, maybe outside the strike zone a little bit. You know, walking him honestly isn't that big of a deal because he can just, he can hurt you in so many ways, especially with the long ball. So Josh Bro, McLennan Community College, rising sophomore nonetheless. I mean, he is just a force to be reckoned with. I'm interested to see where he decides to uh, take his career after his second year at Community College because he's probably the best junior college prospect in the country right now. Spillane Field, it will be rocking tonight. Game two between the Commodores and the Gateman. Gateman trying to move on to the second round. That'll do it for us here on the Gateman pregame show. Presented by South Coast Health for Connor Federico, Sam Corman. I'm Jacob Toby. Make sure to catch the stream at 6.30 and you'll see all the action at Spillane Field. Hashtag, go Gateman.